Welcome everybody to the first edition of the spring of Valpo Baseball Weekly. It's brought to you by our friends at Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. Brian Vickery with you. Glad to be joined by the head coach of the Valpo Baseball Program, Brian Schmack. And before we get to this past weekend series at SEMO, let's talk about the strong start to the season, entering the weekend off your best start since 1999. And what's been different this year and how have you been able to withstand going on the road a lot to get off to a better start than what you've had in recent years? Yeah, I mean, our starting pitching has been a lot better. I mean, I said, I think prior to the year that, you know, that's going to be our strength. And if we're going to have any success, we've got to get more than four plus innings out of them like we did last year. So, uh, you know, obviously everybody's a year older, a little bit more uh, mature. Um, you know, I just think more comfortable with who they are. And I think that's going to play a little bit better. So I think this, the starting pitching has given us a little bit more depth. And um, that's been a huge bonus for us. Let's talk about Caleb Hannes and the way he's looked at the plate. I looked at the stats this morning. He leads the league in batting average and on-base percentage, second in slugging percentage. What have you seen as a sophomore so far this year out of Caleb offensively? Uh, a little bit of the same as last year. I mean, you know, hitters hit. I mean, I think he just puts himself in good positions, and uh, he doesn't give at bats away, you know, so – um, he can he can fight off this tough pitch to get another one in the zone and he usually puts a good swing on it. So, um, you know, I mean, he'd be the first one to tell you that not all of them are, you know, barreled 95 plus. But I think it's just they find ways to, you know, uh, to, to find grass. So and, and, and that's the goal at the end of the day is just is to get on base. And he does a really good job of that. So um, I'm, I'm happy for him so far. Another standout statistically on offense has been Alex Thurston, a big uptick from a year ago. He's hitting 378. What have you seen from him in terms of improvement from his freshman year to this year? I think just a lot more confidence. You know, he was very passive last year, took a lot of pitches that were strikes and, you know, got himself in bad spots. And now he's um, he's attacking those and he's just doing a better job of of putting those in play as well. So, you know, he's worked hard. He did did really well this summer, gained a lot of confidence. And, you know, his swing has changed a little bit. But I just think it's his attitude and his his mindset that's been a bit, been different. And, and it's showing on the stat sheet, too. So. Let's talk about this past weekend series. You knew going in it was a tough opponent. SEMO's lost one game all season. They're undefeated at home, and they're favored to win the Ohio Valley Conference again this year. Uh, a team that took advantage of kind of ball carrying out to right field, hit a lot of home runs over the weekend. What are some takeaways from the series against a high-caliber opponent? Yeah, I think we showed a lot of resiliency, to be honest, because that was a situation, like you said, the, you know, fly balls were home runs. I mean, you know, I think there was 10 in the two games and, you know, maybe one to two of them were probably really legitimate. You know, the other ones were very close. So, you know, to, to be out on the mound and make a good pitch, and to feel like you executed it and then to have it leave the yard is very frustrating. And, you know, Jake Miller especially didn't didn't back down from that. And uh, I think there's a lot to learn from that. So it was it was good to see guys continue to attack. You know, I think this, the second game in the series got away from us. We walked too many guys and, you know, hit four guys as well. And, and, and that's never a good combination. But, um, you know, they had to beat us in the game three. And, and unfortunately, they did. But we didn't beat ourselves. And, you know, I think there's a lot to take from that because, like I said, that is a very, very good offensive team um, with with positive conditions and in, 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 re in retrospect to that. So um, a, a lot to a lot to take out of that. That's positive uh, aside from the losses, which always stink. And speaking of good teams, they'll face a, a top 10 caliber team in midweek, first midweek game of the year at Notre Dame this week. How do you approach uh, the first midweek game of the year on Tuesday? Uh, the same way we always do. We just try to worry about ourselves. You know what I mean? Obviously, they're going to be good. And, you know, the, 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 the cliches of can't beat yourself and, you know, um, you know, you, you can't just go and match up against them, too. We've got to do other things really well. We've got to run the bases. We've got to throw strikes. We've got to, you know, kind of do the uh, the, the – uh, the, the boring things, so to speak. So, um, you know, again, it, we look forward to playing them all the time because it really gives you a, a measuring stick as to where you are and where you need to improve. So, um, you know, we love going over there and, and, and competing against them. And, um, you know, hopefully the result is different than it's been in the, in the past. There is the head coach of the Valpo baseball program, Brian Schmack. Uh, again, Valpo will play at Notre Dame on Tuesday and then a weekend series against future Missouri Valley Conference member, this time in the non-conference at Murray State. That series starts on Friday afternoon. For all the latest in Valpo baseball, you can follow us on social media or visit valpoathletics.com. This has been Valpo Baseball Weekly, and it's brought to you by Lakeshore Bone & Joint Institute.